This week, we're tackling sexual assault on college campuses. In light of recent sexual assault cases on prominent Kansas campuses, safety has been prevalent on the minds of college students more than usual. In Wichita, Kansas, the self-defense program Fearless and Female shows young women of all ages how to protect themselves in everyday situations. Fearless 64-year-old Cindy Coffiner is the founder of Fearless and Female. Her inspiration for starting this program was the tragic murder of her childhood best friend, Julie Ladd, on the Wichita State University campus in 1976. She and I went all through elementary school. We went to middle school together, and then we went to high school. Right here in Wichita, Kansas, after high school, we both enrolled in college at Wichita State University. In college, it was she and her mom at home, and so second semester, she decided to spread her wings and move into the dorms at one of the dorms at Wichita State, and her dorm was an all-women's dorm. Well, so at the end of the semester, summer after our freshman year, um, she was actually murdered in the basement of the dorms at Wichita State. Um, She wasn't doing anything dangerous that night she simply had walked down to the basement and i'm sure just like in your area um we have basements and buildings and this particular dorm had the the parking lot and then as you left the parking lot um you were on the side of the building and there was an open stairwell that led down to the basement and the girls innocently enough would prop that basement door open so if they forgot their keys or whatever and it was closer to the parking lot and so and then they could just go down those stairs and up into the dorm well unfortunately that's exactly what this guy did he simply walked down those steps and just hung out in the basement and waited for somebody to come downstairs. And throughout the evening, Julie, they're not sure if she was going to do laundry or a vending machine, but he was in the basement and he ended up murdering her. Seven long years after Julie was murdered, her case was still not solved, until a different criminal, facing jail time, cut a deal with law enforcement, revealing the identity of Julie's murderer. He had, um, hadn't had gotten caught, and he had moved to Colorado Springs. And in that seven years, he actually murdered another young girl out there. But had that person here in Wichita spoken up seven years um, before that, probably would have saved that young girl. After Julie's murder, Coffiner was paralyzed with fear. So she took the matter of her safety into her own hands. I was just afraid all the time. And so I kind of lived just in fear all the time. And so I started taking a bunch of different self-defense classes all over the country. And way back then, they were teaching us to, I mean, I'd go to these weekend seminars and they teach me exactly what they were teaching cops and FBI agents who, you know, outweighed me by a hundred and 30 some pounds and you know whatever and and I realized so one time they had us down on the floor and we were um, simulating um, pinning a perpetrator to the ground on the ice and I remember that day my guy was this 250 pound guy and and I'm straddling him and holding his hands down and I thought this is ridiculous you know, all he would have to do is raise his arms and he could buck me off. And I thought, Ann, why do I want to, why do I want to give him time to rest and recover so he could get up and continue his attack on me? After taking these classes, Cindy realized that women need to learn a more specific type of self-defense that focuses on getting away from an attacker. Women have to learn different, differently, different skills than men, because in most situations, an attacker's going to be bigger and stronger and probably more experienced. And I thought, well, you know, I want to get away. My best defense is to put as much distance between myself and him. And so I kind of changed everything that I had learned over the years that I had been taking training 
and um, I started teaching women skills that, well, and so one day, and I would talk about it all the time to friends and acquaintances, and and one day um, a friend said, would you come and speak at my church group? And I said, sure. And on the outside and on the inside, I'm thinking, what are you doing? You don't know how to, what, what, what are you doing? And so I went and taught and, and um, it turned out fine. But I realized I need to teach women how to get away. And so I kind of created the program. Coffiner takes a practical, realistic approach to self-defense. Almost everything I teach women standing up will come in handy on the ground because most attacks on a woman, that's where it's going to end up is on the ground with, um, in a rape scenario. And, um, and so I thought, okay, I don't want to have, I don't want women to have to learn a gazillion different techniques. And so, you know, I'll teach an eye jab and ear slap and palm heel to the nose. And then and we'll do techniques. I'll teach the techniques standing up. And then I'll say, now, once you're knocked to the ground, those same techniques. You know, when you're standing, you might not be able to reach a six-foot-five guy's eyes to do the eye jab. Um, now, you've got lower body that you can go after, too. But I'll, I say, now, guess what? That same technique will come in handy on the ground and then I'll show them a situation say you know you've been knocked to the ground and and he's on top now it doesn't matter if he's six foot five or five foot one you can reach his eyes now so that way women don't have to learn a gazillion different um, techniques and and so I teach them skills standing up and skills on the ground but Everything is with the ultimate goal of running away to safety. Not only does Coffiner teach fighting techniques, she shows her students how to avoid being a victim of crime at all. I like a purse that crosses my body, and that way my hands are free. It looks more difficult to try and get my purse away than one that's just hanging on my shoulder. So I'm starting to look like a bad target of crime, and, and I've got my hands to fight and all of that. One of the most important things to her is that she provides women with a safe space to share their stories. Every class I teach, even if it's a little Girl Scout class, I can tell that somebody has already had a really bad situation happening. And, and you know, I tell them, you know, it wasn't until years after college that I shared my story, my personal story. And then this friend that I've known since elementary school, this one from middle school, high school, everybody had a similar type story, and but nobody talked about it. And um, they, so therefore, they just kind of, every one of us suffered in silence thinking, oh, I was asking for it. You know, you got what you deserved and that type of thing. And so I, you know, encourage women and girls to, you know, tell somebody because if you personally don't have a story You've got a mother, sister, daughter, best friend, coworker that has a story. And, you know, share your story and then listen to their story, too. As she is located in Wichita, Kaufner teaches many classes to college students. But her services don't end there. She teaches her classes to all ages of women in many settings. I teach a lot of sorority, uh, sororities from Wichita State. Um, but... Um, teach as young as five years old and then of course maybe five to ten or eleven years old and those some of the same techniques but in a more age appropriate skills for them and then and then I'll teach just um, I'll throw a class out on Facebook, you know, um, youngest age, 12 years old. I do a lot of church groups, sororities, businesses. I traveled up to Emporia, K-State. Really, it's all different kind of women. Little girls on up to, I know I've had 80-year-olds in my class, and I share my story about Julie, 
um, being murdered in the dorms and um, and I tell that in in all of my classes and um, and so everybody gosh I've probably oh I don't know six seven eight hundred thousand women over the years have have heard her story and and so and I've got a lot of women locally that will they'll see a class that I'm doing a class and they'll come back for a refresher. And you, I've taught at car dealerships, you know, the women that work there. I've taught, you name it, I've, I've probably taught there. <laughs> Kofner provides information that is helpful for every kind of woman in her classes. When you're leaving a store, I don't care if you've got two, and, and this is for any of us, but I don't care if you've got two bags of groceries or 22 bags of groceries. Always get a carryout boy because with a carryout person, now you're starting to look like a, a bad target of crime because it's not just a, an older woman or a, a cute young college girl walking alone out to her car. You now are kind of with the carryout person. You, you're you're starting to look like a bad target. You've got the buddy system going. And, um, you know, so that might be enough to as a for a deterrent. She has learned that the most important ways to stay safe are being aware of your surroundings and trusting your intuition. Intuition is is probably as important, if not more important, than learning to fight because you know, when you get that funny feeling in your stomach or that voice in your head that says, Get out, get out, get out of here. You know, something weird's going on here. You know, we can it's very rarely wrong. And if we just listen to that feeling, we can, you know, really avoid a lot of bad situations. And I'm guilty of this too. But um, when one evening I was, um, oh, one of the news stations or pay, the paper was wanting to do a story about why there is so much crime on college campuses, crime crimes against women on college campuses. And so we were meeting um, out at Wichita State. And I got there kind of early. And I was sitting and waiting. And I was outside kind of waiting for the reporter to get there. And as I was sitting there waiting, I was kind of looking at my phone. And, and I was kind of looking around waiting for the reporter. And almost every student that walked by me was on their phone and either texting or you know whatever they were doing, but not and like I said, I do this too, and I shouldn't, but not watching their surroundings. Um, you know, they were preoccupied looking at their phones. So I tell women, you know, people, um, I tell them, you know, put your phone away when you're walking across campus or anywhere in particular. Head up, make eye contact with people that are passing. Now, you know, when I, I say I, in my classes, I say, now, ladies, when I say make eye contact, and I will, I have three sons, so I know how to do this, but I've seen them do it before to each other. I'll, I'll maybe somebody that's sitting in the front row, I will say, now, when I say make eye contact, I don't mean, and I get kind of up close to her and boom, 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 kind of flex on her, you know, like boys do and, you know, throw their arms back like, hey, you want a piece of this, you know. And I'll say, you know, I don't mean flex on them. I'm just saying make eye, make that sociably acceptable amount of time eye contact that lets somebody know I've seen you. I know you're in my environment. You're not going to be able to sneak up on me. And then as they, as you pass people, I turn around and kind of look over my shoulder, just make sure that maybe somebody hasn't passed me and has started following me. If you are ever in a situation where you feel unsafe, just remember your bra. B-R-A, bra, but it stands for be aware, run away. Be aware of who and what is going on around you. And if something creeps you out, 
get the heck out of there. And running away can be as much as maybe you're going into a, a building and you're waiting for the elevator doors and the elevator doors open up and there's somebody on that elevator that looks like they could kill you in a minute. And, you know, but as women, what do we do? Oh, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And, and so we go ahead and step in this elevator with someone that looks like they could put us both on the news the next morning. You know, listen to your intuition. It is extremely important to Kofner that women know how to be their own best protectors. I tell little girls. I tell little girls, you know, if somebody comes up to you, if an adult comes towards you and they're kind of reaching out, you know, and saying, hey, 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 you know, Susie and or whatever, and and um, and you don't know them, there is nothing wrong with you putting your hands up, setting your boundaries, yelling no, and running away to safety. And I tell them it doesn't mean you're being rude, doesn't mean you're being disrespectful, it means that you have set your boundaries and you, you know, no adult needs to be walking up to a young child. Same way with us, you know, if if somebody walks up to us in a parking garage or something and you start yelling, no, get back, stop, I don't know you, whatever, you know. And then you end up finding out, oh, Lord, that's my new professor. Guess what? Don't stink and care. You didn't know that person when they walked up and put their hand on your shoulder or whatever it was. You didn't know them. You were protecting yourself. We can always go back. And I and years ago, I used to say um, in the instance of a little kid, and I said, you know, you can always take your child back and apologize. And I thought, wait a minute. I, I don't want to use that word apologize anymore because the child didn't do anything wrong. They knew they didn't know that person. So I I rephrased that and I said, you know, you can you you can always go back and explain. I didn't know you when you walked up to me in a parking garage. I didn't know when you had followed me clear across campus and started up the same stairs in a really dark area of campus. I didn't know that you were my new professor. I was listening to my intuition and I was becoming my own best protector. We can't always depend on being in, around a lot of people being with our, you know, dad, boyfriend, husband, big brother, you know, we have to be our own best protector. Thank you, Cindy Coffiner, for your tireless work to make women feel safe and heard. For more information on Fearless and Female, visit fearlessandfemale.com. And if you or someone you know is a victim of sexual violence, call the National Sexual Assault Hotline at one 800 656 4673.